Kimber from The Pinning Mama. I just wanted to um, share a few quick tricks today um, for um, writing words and using fonts in Silhouette Studio. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about isn't actually in Silhouette Studio, but when you're starting to do a project, sometimes it can be overwhelming just to try to figure out which font you want. And you can see over here on the side right here that um, it's not you know, super easy to see all the fonts you have and what they look like. They're really small. So my first trick is to use um, the website wordmark.it to help you choose your fonts. Um, so you can type in anything. I'm just going to do the word dance for an example. And you just type it in, click enter, and it's going to load every font you have. And it's going to show you how that um, looks. You can change the font size. So if you want it to be bigger, you know, if you can't... I didn't mean to do 2566, that's kind of big. Um, so if you want to be bigger or smaller, you can see it. Or um, one other trick I like to do on here is a lot of times um, if you're stenciling or something, you might want to see how it kind of looks negative, not positive like it is right now. So you can click negative and it shows you how it would look cut out. Um, and then the other thing that's really helpful is is if you have a lot of fonts like I do you might not be sure which one you like as you scroll you don't want to forget you can click highlight multiple of them as you scroll and find the ones that you like um, and I'll just click a few and then you go to filter selected and you can see that all of the ones I selected are now next to each other and I can go through and decide if I like that kind of see it next to each other which one's my favorite if I want to rule one out I can just remove it and it makes it super simple um, so I like to use wordmark.it. Again, that's www.wordmark.it um, to help me select my fonts. The next thing we're going to talk about is um, actually putting your words and your fonts into Silhouette Studio. So what you're going to do is choose the font tool right here, or the text tool, sorry, and um, you will get a cursor and then just click anywhere and you can start typing. I'm going to use the word dance because I think it's going to be a good example for what I want to do. I'm going to zoom in on it a bit so you can see better. Um, and then what you'll see here is that it is a script font. Um, I'm using Adelia right here and it is a script font. Um, but you'll notice when we type the letters there are still some overlaps. And if we were to just cut this out as is, this part of the letter would cut and this would also cut. So it would um, cut all the way around that letter instead of just doing one fluid cut around the entire thing, which is generally what you're going to want, especially with a script font. Um, so what we're going to do um, is a couple of things. The simple way we're going to do it is just click off, we're going to right click, and we're going to weld this. And you notice once we weld it together, those um, cut marks are gone and now it's just going to cut um, right around each letter and not cut each letter out individually for that word in script. Now um, I'm going to undo that real quick um, because one other thing I want to show you is this font right here lines up pretty well. It just barely overlaps the next letter but some fonts you'll find um, don't exactly overlap, some letters don't overlap, or they maybe overlap too much and what you can do is um, use this right here, the character spacing, to help you line those up just where you want them before you weld. So you can move them closer together if you go down, or you can move them farther apart if you want them maybe individual but to not cut over each other, or if you just barely want them touching, um, you know, so you can weld it and they look perfect, you can get it right to that perfect spot. So you can use that character spacing right there. Um, and once you're done and you have it to the right spot, again, um, we right click, and we weld it together. Um, so that's the next trip, trick I wanted to show you. Um, under the character spacing, there's a line spacing, and what line spacing is gonna do is something similar, but um, it's going to do it with the lines and not the words, or the letters individually, sorry. Um, so if we type two words on top of each other, that line spacing is now going to move them farther apart or closer together. I generally don't use this one much because if I'm doing separate words, I prefer to type each word individually and then just move the box. Like if I, oops, um, move the box around so it is exactly, you know, where I want it to be. Um, so that is my next tip. I'm going to show you for my next tip. Um, you'll see right here 
since we um, welded those together, you'll notice that these letters now are two separate objects um, in Silhouette Studio. They're not together. So my next trick is if you're going to weld it together um, and you don't want them to move individually, you can say I want to move this up to maybe the corner of my mat here because I'm about to cut it and I don't want to cut it in the middle of my piece of vinyl. You're going to want to, I drag a box all the way around to highlight the whole word, right click, and you're going to want to group it together. What that allows you to do is move it all um, at once together, perfectly lined up, um, rather than trying to move that D and the A N C E individually up here and then line it up exactly how it was supposed to be. So all I did to do that again was just to right click and I hit group. If you want to change it or didn't do something wrong, you can always ungroup it and move it again. Um, so that is my next tip right there was grouping them together. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you is if um, we ungroup those, you see you can now move them individually. So say one reason we might want to do this is if, say, we wanted that D to be much bigger. We could ungroup them, and then without changing the size of the end of the word, we could make the D bigger. And then it could be, you know, dance with a big D. Um, so that's one reason you might do that. Now, if you wanted to edit, say, the middle of the A or the E or something like that wasn't exactly right, um, what you're going to need to do is actually not just ungroup them, but you're going to need to right click and then release the compound path. When you release the compound path, it makes every single little detailed shape within this editable. So now, the middle of that E, I can, you know, move that around, in, out, around, make it bigger, say it was too small and it wasn't cutting the whole thing, I could extend it, um, etc. So um, we've talked about choosing our font, we've talked about welding it together, we've talked about grouping it, and then this is releasing the compound path, and that allows you to edit every single thing in that word. Um, the very last thing I want to talk to you about is um, outlining your words. And this is one of those things that's super easy to do, um, but I want to tell you about it because it's one of those things that until you need to do it, you're kind of like, I know I should be able to do this, but how do I do it? Um, so I'm just going to show you how to do it real quick because it's super easy, and I use it on a lot of my projects because I think it looks great. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to group these all back together um, because I think that'll make it easier to do. So they're grouped together, and what I'm basically going to do is put an outline um, around this text so that um, if you were doing like a two-color decal or I use this on heat transfer um, when I made my kids uh, big brother, big sister shirts to make the wording stand out more. Um, I've used this with a lot of paper projects. Um, there's just a ton of things that you can do with this that is really, really useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight or, you know, choose my word so it gets the bounding box around it. Then I'm going to go to the offset um, icon, which is right here. Open the offset window. And basically it's pretty easy. I just click offset. And when you click offset, it's going to give you the uh, offset on the outside right here. And we see that does that. You can make it bigger or smaller. And it's actually offsetting these because I needed to group those back together. I don't think I got them. Um, but you can kind of see how that works right there. So we just do that. Then that would give me the outside outline of that word. Um, and what I could do then... Here, let me try to fix this for you guys real quick. We're going to do this again just to show you how we do this from start to finish. I'm going to dance. Okay, and then I'm going to weld it. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger just so you all can see it well. Okay. And then we're going to go to offset. Oops, it didn't work because I didn't have it selected, so I'm going to make sure both are selected. So I want the whole word. Well, I'll group them together. Group together, and then we're going to do offset, and you see that goes perfectly around it. And um, what that allows you to do, you don't want it that big. Sometimes it's easier to use it over here. Let's put one. Okay. So that looks pretty nice. I'm going to go with that. And what you'll notice is this is, again, kind of cutting into each other. I probably want this um, to be one fluid piece of vinyl. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click. I'm going to weld it together. 
and you see how that those little cut lines right in that spot went away. Now, um, let me show you just by filling it in what an example of what this would look like and kind of why you would want to do it. So I go to my fill window. You do not have to fill this in. This is just going to let you visually see kind of what I'm doing. And then let's choose this one and we'll do... Oops. Didn't choose everything. There we go. Yeah. So basically I would be able to make, maybe make this into a decal I put on a binder and it would have yellow behind it and pink on top of it. Um, to cut this, what I would do is I would select the pink. I would move this up here and then I would put the yellow over here. I would have a pink piece of vinyl right here and I would have a yellow piece of vinyl right here and then I would send it to cut. You'd be able to line that up on your mat based on the um, grid on your screen right here. And those um, are my tips on text, using text for beginners um, in Silhouette Studio. If you have any other questions on text or how to do something, um, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear it and I'm happy to help. Um, and I hope you all have a great day. Thanks.